of the game, keys to victory. Um, and let's start out with Notre Dame. I got a couple here, Cody, that I'm going to ramble off, and we'll get your obviously your thoughts back and forth. Me being a Notre Dame fan, I, I took some time to get these kind of keys to victory in. I'm excited to get them down. But my first one, number one, I think it's got to be people are talking about you know guarding Marvin Harrison Jr. How they're going to guard or cover Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm-hmm. He's going to get his own. I think number one, Cody, they got to make Kyle McCord uncomfortable. Whether that it's pressuring him, mixing up blitzes, um, either mixing up coverages that he may not recognize, uh, the crowd noise there, I think they got to make him uncomfortable. They've only had six sacks through three games. I, I think they got to get at least three or four. I, I think four is the number. If those edge rushers and linebackers, they looked impressive against Navy bringing the pressure. And this is an Ohio State O line that lost Harris Johnson Jr. That lost uh, Jones, I believe he's on the Browns, and they lost their center. So they lost three or four guys to the league. So they got some new faces. They're going to be nervous in this game too. But I think making Kyle McCord uncomfortable has got to be the number one. Um, your thoughts on what what can Notre Dame do defensively to make Kyle McCord uncomfortable? And then is there anything receiver-wise that they can maybe cover up too? Because they got a good receiver unit there at Ohio State. Yeah, you know, um, anytime you have a quarterback that's newer to big-time college football and a defensive coach like Marcus Freeman, you know he's probably scheming up some crazy – boundary blitz with the field drop zone with the tight or with the defensive end linebacker blitz it's crazy you already know he's going to have something cooked up for Kyle McCord but also at the same time I think you just got to tackle whenever you have good athletes like Ohio State does Mm. and you get them in space they're going to get the football that's just how their offense is set up they're going to get the football can you tackle in space against Emeka Buka, Julian Fleming Marvin Harrison Jr. and all the other big time receivers as well as Mr. Henderson at running back and um, even maybe even Kyle McCord a little bit in the QB run mm-hmm. game. So if Coach Freeman is able to draw up those intricate coverages, are they going to be able to rally down and make tackles in space against some really dynamic athletes for Ohio State? A hundred percent. I agree with that. Uh, my number two, I'm going to call this Hartman's heyday. And here's why. <laughs> I, I, this feels like a game where they're traditionally a running offense for Notre Dame and they're going to have to run the football against Ohio State. But for some reason, Cody, I got a feeling that they're going to throw to open the run. I feel like Sam Hartman, this is his game to shine. More specifically, explosive plays, stretching the field vertically. Some guys like Tobias Merriweather, 75-yard touchdown last week against Central Michigan. I know it was Central Michigan, but I think those explosive plays will kind of make the safeties go back, safeties go further, the DBs further, so the running game will open up too. This screams Sam Hartman heyday. 300, 350 yard passing game. Um, what what can they do offensively to kind of create those explosive plays, Cody? Well, I think that uh, Ohio State is going to try and pressure them. I think they're going to try and bring um, more than Ohio State can block. So Sam Hartman's mm-hmm. going to have to stay in the pocket and uh, prove how tough he is. I mean, he's shown it all the four years that he was at Wake Forest. He's an absolute warrior. Um, he'll stand in and take hits as necessary. Um, although he never had to take a hit from JT Tui Molo out. So you never know. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I think that if Sam Hartman can hang in the pocket, deliver the ball to his big-time receivers, uh, mm. Chris Tyree, Tobias Merriweather, they're able to run the ball with Estime. I think ultimately, I think this is Notre Dame's game to win. So I think at the end of the day, as long as Sam Hartman doesn't turn the ball over, is efficient in the intermediate and short passing game to open up those play-action deep shots to those big-time mm. players on the outside, I think Notre Dame probably wins this football game. Last one. I mean, I think it's it, it's simple, but it's but it's sweet, and it's kind of the formula between these two teams. Who can run? Who can run the football? Who can run the damn ball? Like flat out, who can run it? Trayvon Henderson versus Audric Estime. Um, I mean, who can run the football? Which offensive line is more dominant? I think that's going to set the tone for the game. And um, yeah, I mean, who can run the damn football? I think that's my my last point of victory for Notre Dame there. Yeah, you know, I think ultimately, I think as long as Notre Dame can be close late, because if you think about it, Ohio State hasn't had any real game pressure. Their defense is giving up 6.5 points a game right now. So they've had no game pressure. Mm. They've blown everyone out of the water. Their closest game was that first game against Indiana when Kyle McCord shit the bed. So ultimately, at the same time, that as, as good as you want to say, like, oh, they look good, Indiana, Youngstown State, Western Kentucky. Yeah. At home. So, yeah. Well, actually, it was at Indiana, the first game. But, like, if you can put game pressure, new quarterback, on the road, first big-time road game, 
under the lights, prime time, the pressure of, I got to get the ball to Marvin Harrison Jr. I got to get the ball to Emeka Ibuka. I got to get the ball mm. to my playmakers. And he's getting hit, and he's seeing intricate coverages. I just feel like, ultimately, Kyle McCord cannot turn the ball over. And Notre Dame, you have to force three turnovers. If Notre Dame can force three turnovers, they win the football game. Do you think Notre Dame playing four games versus Ohio State playing three is an advantage for him too? Absolutely. Even though it was, wasn't really like a great opponent, but still it's four games. Four games allows you to get the kinks out. Um, it also, it also, hear me out, it also allows you to understand who's redshirting and who's not. The new redshirt rule where guys mm-hmm. have to, like, can redshirt after four games played kind of lets you know who's ready and who's not. So now your roster is really set. You're not having to worry about, like, ah, do I want to get that guy in the game? Do I need to put him in? Do I need to take him out? Um, so I know some people might not be thinking about that, but ultimately when you think about a roster and think about guys who can make an impact, if we've gotten to that fourth game already and this is now their fifth game, now they're not going to be able to put in a guy, a freshman maybe to, like, take up some reps.